Well, irises are one of those perennials that are practically indestructible, but even they can succumb to diseases from time to time. And this is one of our perennial irises in our studio gardens that has a beautiful white blossom. But we're noticing that it's getting some leaf spots on it this fall, and that is actually a fungus disease called iris leaf spot. It's very characteristic. It has a dark halos around the spot. And the point that I want to make this time of year is, though, that this disease can practically be controlled by good sanitation practices. And what that means is you want to come in and cut back the foliage below where the leaf spots are, and you can see that they're pretty much this far. And then most importantly is that you rake all of this stuff up, but even the dead leaves that are here from the growing season, you need to pull those out and just clean as much of that stuff up as you can. If you don't and you leave them here, those spores are gonna reinfect the plants next year. Now the main problem with this one is our Chinese pistache and our crepe myrtle tree is giving us too much shade and that's causing them to be partially shaded, which is really holding too much moisture and probably increasing the disease chance. But sanitation is really important. And how do we know about things to, to do at certain times of the year? Well, people ask that question a lot, and of course they're good fact sheets. But you've heard us talk about our handy-dandy uh, 1995 calendar and garden planner. This is something that we're introducing, especially next year for our 20th anniversary. Of course, now's the time to get it. But if you'll look at it, it's a week-at-a-glance calendar. But it, I'm going to turn back in here to a certain page in November. And let me just tell you some of the tips that we have in it, like gather and shred leaves, add them to the compost. It tells us how to store leftover seeds. And again, to leave foliage like on asparagus and mums and other perennials that aren't disease infected to help insulate them for the winter. But it's just loaded with educational tips and that's why we're so proud of it because it makes a great gift for the gardener and it also is very educational and that's a purpose. But it has nice colorful photos too. So this is something that you'll really want to try to get your hands on. And of course at the end of the show today we'll tell you how you can order them. But they're very nice gifts for gardeners and, and just loaded full of information. Now, in addition to the irises, there are other things that you need to be worried about in cleaning up those foliage, like peach leaf curl. If the leaves have dropped on the ground and you haven't raked them up yet, do so. The same with tomatoes. Be sure if you have tomatoes left in the garden that you pull them up out of the ground, rake up the foliage again, and, and there's so many things like black spot on roses, the same principle, just by cleaning up those leaves and good sanitation practices, you can pretty much decrease the incidence of disease next year. Now, if you leave it on the ground, you're gonna ask for more problems. The next question everybody's asking probably is, well, what do you do with this stuff? Well, you can put it in your compost pile, but you need to make sure you get it hot enough and you turn it and you, you turn it frequently. Even during the winter, you can compost. If you get it hot enough, it's okay to put in the compost compost pile because it will break down the diseases. Otherwise, most likely you want to maybe like dig a hole somewhere in the garden or something and bury it and let it compost that way where the spores would not be affected by the wind and air. But I can't emphasize it enough. You'll save yourself a lot of headaches if you'll get out and do some sanitation practices this time of year. And also don't forget to clean up those perennial weeds around the garden plots too.